Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. People in the Indian state of West Bengal are voting in the final phase of elections despite raging coronavirus infections across India. Long queues were seen outside polling booths raising concerns about the further spread of the virus amid a deadly second wave. The surge has overwhelmed its underfunded and fragile healthcare system and even crematoriums and graveyards where gravediggers are working around the clock, sometimes on 24-hour shifts, to bury those who have died. Meanwhile, a shipment containing 120 oxygen concentrators arrived in New Delhi from Britain and a Russian flight carrying ventilation equipment, bedside, monitors, medicines and other essential pharmaceutical items has also landed in the capital. U.S. President Joe Biden has made his first speech to Congress, marking the eve of his first 100 days in office. Tonight, I come to talk about crisis and opportunity, about rebuilding the nation, revitalizing our democracy, and winning the future for America. The president laid out a sweeping investment plan for jobs, education and social care and called it a once-in-a-generation investment in America itself. He also said he was willing to work with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle to come to an agreement and he will meet Democratic and Republican lawmakers at the White House on May the 12th to try to find common ground. Meanwhile, the FBI has carried out searches at the home and office of Rudy Giuliani, who is Donald Trump's personal lawyer. Federal prosecutors in Manhattan are investigating Giuliani's dealings in Ukraine, which included his probe before the 2020 presidential election into Democrat Joe Biden and his son Hunter's dealings in that country. A lawyer for the former Republican New York City mayor confirmed a search warrant had been executed and that federal authorities had seized electronics. China has launched a key module of a new permanent space station that it plans to complete by the end of 2022. The Tianhe module, which contains living quarters for crew members, was launched from the Wenchang Space Launch Center. It is one of three main components of what would be China's first self-developed space station, rivaling the only other space station service, the International Space Station. China has prioritized space exploration in recent years with the aim of becoming a significant space power by 2030. Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny has appeared in public for the first time since going on hunger strike. The 44-year-old Russian opposition leader appeared via video link during a legal hearing and told the court he looks like a creepy skeleton as he appealed against his fine for slandering a 94-year-old Second World War veteran. Mr. Navalny began a hunger strike on March the 31st to protest against the prison authorities' refusal to let his doctors visit after he developed a severe back pain and numbness in his legs. Tens of thousands of Colombian protesters have clashed with police across the country over a controversial government tax reform. The clashes took place after thousands gathered in answer to calls from Colombia's biggest unions to march against a suite of new or expanded taxes on individuals and businesses. In downtown Bogota, riot police set off tear gas to control a large crowd. A number of protesters were detained and officers reported injured in the demonstration. And finally, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have released two new portraits to mark their 10th wedding anniversary. Prince William met the then Kate Middleton at St Andrews University in Scotland in September 2001. They dated for many years before eventually marrying at Westminster Abbey in London in 2011. William, the eldest grandchild of Queen Elizabeth, and Kate have since had three children, seven-year-old George, five-year-old Charlotte, and three-year-old Prince Louis. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.